Now, business leaders say climate change is already forcing them to make changes, and they are calling on governments to do the same. A new survey by the UN Global Compact and Accenture spoke to 1,200 CEOs worldwide. Nearly half of them said they see supply chain interruptions due to extreme weather as a top risk. 71% say they are actively working to develop a net zero emissions target for their company. And yet this is key here. Only 2% of them have had a formal target validated by an independent group of scientific advisors. And this comes, of course, just days before the COP26 meeting in Glasgow, Scotland. At that meeting, world leaders are set to explain how they plan to turn their priorities into reality. Uh, Sandra o Ojiambo is the CEO and executive director of the United Nations Global Compact, which conducted this survey. And, and thanks so much for being with us on um, what are really uh, some important days in the lead up to this summit. Let's get to these key fi findings. And what is the call to action coming from these global companies? Thanks. Thank you so much for having me at this really important time before we go into the COP26. Um, our survey uh, looked at close to 1,000 leaders, actually 1,200 leaders. And the key call to action here really is that private sector is asking for clear policy guidance from policymakers. They want more. They want to raise their ambition. They want to stick to these uh, science-based targets in the 1.5 degree trajectory. So they're calling for increased cooperation. They're calling for clear policy guidance. And they're really calling for a united front, you know, to address the climate crisis as we go into COP. Uh, the world is at a, a, at a very important tipping point in terms of climate. And I think it's really time for inflection and for recommitment to this 1.5 degree trajectory. And, and that is coming, of course, from private companies. These are private companies that, as you know, Sanda, have plenty of cash on hand. We talk about it all the time on this show. Why is it necessary that governments leave? Now, some might conclude that they're looking, these companies are looking for government subsidies or handouts. Or, or is it just that they are looking for a level playing field and policy guidance? I think it is about that level playing field. You know, uh, when the Paris Agreement was signed, there was what was called commitments towards nationally determined contributions. And these are truly driven forward by governments. So we need governments to commit to these NDCs, as we call them. And then we need private sector to then step up and collaboratively work towards these national targets. For private sector, I think our clear call to action is that commitments need to be grounded in science, and hence why we advocate and co-founded for, co-founded the Science-Based Targets Initiative that calls for any targets to be scientifically validated so that we're truly able to track progress from here until all of the milestones that we've set for the future. So it's important not just for commitments, but for those commitments to be grounded in science and to be able to you know, align with the, the timelines that have been set. Yeah, understanding that, again, only 2% had those uh, grounded in any kind of scientific uh, evidence. In terms of tracking, though, what business leaders and companies, importantly, can do, is there any sense that we should be moving towards that in, in the coming months and years? I think tracking is important, and that's why frameworks such as the Paris Agreement, setting these nationally determined uh, contributions, and of course the science-based targets are important. It's about accountability. Look, we are at the, the, the cusp of an existential uh, crisis, and what matters now is accountability. We need that long-term vision that pushes us to 2030 and 2050, but we also need to be sure that we're taking credible short-term actions that lead us to the goals. So this is truly not a time for greenwashing. It is truly a time for, as I say, short-term actions that are scientifically determined that will lead the private sector to, to push forward on their commitments. And before I let you go, Sandra, you know, one thing that stood out for me uh, in this report was the issue of how climate change was affecting companies already. You know, half of them saying they're seeing it, you know, so much sooner that they thought this was something that they had until, you know, 2025 or 2030 to deal with. They're dealing with it right now. I mean, we show it all the time in the United States and Europe at this hour. They are dealing with extreme uh, weather. What do you think companies are doing and how much do you think it's impacting them day in, day out? That is truly an important factor because, you know, in this discourse, we do talk about 2030 and 2050. But our CEOs did say that they are feeling the impact of the climate crisis right now. 
Many of them have experienced disruptions in their supply chains. And as you said, between floods and wildfires and other you know, climate crises, life and business is being interrupted. So you know, CEOs are taking urgent action around setting in place early warning systems, trying to future-proof their business and their business resiliency. But as the survey shows, certainly, there's a lot more that needs to be done. Um, I think overall the message here would be the climate crisis is one that really requires you know, multi-stakeholder collaboration. Private sector cannot do this alone. We need government to set the enabling environment, to hold the accountability around nationally determined contributions, and certainly that commitment to the 1.5 degree trajectory. And I think COP, the COP26, presents that unique moment to galvanize us globally around how we can provide solutions for this crisis. Achisand, I thank you for articulating all of that so well as we, you know, lean on governments and corporations in the coming days. Appreciate it. Thank you.